Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We're back once again. We have a little break in the heat, but I guess that's going to end tomorrow, right? I don't know, something like that. No. But uh, we've all been stifling here in New York. We've got, uh, other than Craig Kaminsky, everybody here in the Hudson Valley. Craig's not too far, though. We're from Pennsylvania. Let me introduce everybody. Karen the birthday girl, La Preziosa, oh. is in the house. Happy birthday. Thank Happy you. Birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Ralph Tambora, otherwise known as Count Ralphus, is in the house. Our center square. How do you always get to be the center square, Chris? Chris Allo, the king is here. <laughs> uh, no always. Idea. The Rock is here. Mr. Black and Blue, Ryan Scow. Oh, I love that shirt. Yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Look at that's, that. That's um, sexy. Isn't that sexy? That very, is. very definitely. Is. There you go. Craig Kaminsky is in the house, as we just mentioned, and the man who lives by the river, Mr. Rob Lasanti. What's going on? But not in a van. Not in a van. Not in a van down by the river. No, not at all. <laughs> so today, this is a uh, this is a topic that Mr. Allo had recommended, and uh, we haven't. Amazingly enough, we haven't really talked about this in the past. We've kind of done similar type things like fantasy uh, lineups and fantasy bands we'd like to see, blah blah blah. But we've never actually talked about bands that are still in existence today that we've never seen that are still on our bucket list, and hopefully someday we'll get a chance to go catch them. So uh, I've asked everybody to put together a list of five. And the birthday girl is going to start us off. There's five <laughs> bands that you still have not seen that you really would like to. Are we doing one at a time or what are we, how's this going? Blow through the first five. We'll turn into a pumpkin if we do that. <laughs> All right, go through the five. I have the first two I've mentioned on this show before, Rolling Stones and Alice Cooper. Uh, some of my favorite songs in the world are from the Stones and they are the quintessential uh, rock and roll band. Um, just classic rock and roll to me, the blueprint of modern rock. Uh, Alice Cooper, I always love a performer. I mean, I like his songs, but I, I want to see the show. I want to, I'm really there for the performance and uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, so, a, a quick little uh, comment yeah. on the first two picks. So, I mean, obviously you can still go see both of these because they do come around. The Stones, though, is just so expensive to go see the Stones. But oh, I'm just not getting jealous. the tickets too it would be uh, just a nightmare from what I have to sell a stadium, kind of stadium <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah you got to yeah. go to stadium shows. But Alice play, comes one, around yeah. fairly. I would, Karen, I would definitely say you need to make Alice take that take him off that bucket list as soon as possible. July, yeah, I want to sure. say July thirtieth or something at the end of July in is Albany. Albany. Yes, I'm Albany. going to see him in that. Albany. Yeah. So play it's the palace. I think it's the palace. It's the day before Exciter. I know it's Alice Cooper and Exciter back to back. That's a good weekend. Uh, so yeah. Come yeah. On. So I Alice know about Alice coming around, but I've kind of resigned myself to not seeing the stones. You gotta sell a kidney. Yeah, <laughs> it's not worth it. My boss went not too long ago and it was a headache for him the whole time. And you know, they were so far away and their tickets were so expensive and you know, yeah. it's just like a big party, and that's fine. But I could party around here. I don't. I saw. You know, I've seen the Stones twice. Uh, once at Chase Stadium back in '89. That was a lot of fun. But then I went to go see them at MetLife Stadium. I don't know, whatever that was, four years ago. That last oh. that came through. I didn't enjoy myself at all. Too yeah, many people. Too many people acting like idiots. You're right. I was a million miles away, all the way up top. It was so expensive. I mean, everything about like going to those big stadium shows now is just so expensive and so ridiculous. The parking alone, just uh, thinking. About it. They were great, but it's like, but I I couldn't enjoy them because of all this other stuff that was going on. Right, right. That's the last time uh, they played, I think Prudential Center in Newark. I don't know how many years ago, but I know Steve Keeler went. He went. I went to look at tickets, and I'm like, this is like five car payments. Fuck this. I'm not going. Yeah, it's just, it's well, just, I love the Stones. But... Life? I don't know. Where Giants play? Yeah, yeah they did play there. This yeah, was the just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, but they played they play the Prudential like the, the two years before. They, that was when they did that really short run, Ryan, and Steve was able yeah. to, like, they, he spent a lot of money, I remember. It, so. Those tickets were hundreds, hundreds. Yeah. yeah. That's not even StubHub. That's just face value. They were like five, six hundred bucks. I would have fucking gun to my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. I love them, but not no way. Go to like six shows for that money. Yeah, I, I can go yeah. to happily to go to fucking Europe for that kind of money. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so, uh, Karen, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, I'm glad. Carry you on. Did. I'm just gonna go let the dog out real quick. So I'll be right back. 
Blow the dogs out. I, just, I, just that. I like interacting with everybody. So if anybody's got to say something, I have no problem with that. Um, the next band I want to do uh, is the Black Angels. And I really love them. They're one of my favorite bands. Um, I love that moody kind of dark sound. It's very psych. It's got tons of fuzz. Uh, they've been around since uh, 2004. That was their first release. And I've just never gotten around to seeing them. People who, I mean, they're always playing in like the city. And I, as of late, I just met people who like this, like them as well. Like before I was the only person and, you know, getting down there by myself was a drag. And, and now they're around and it's always like on a school night and stuff. So I have to see them sooner or later. And... My next band is Witch, uh, Jay Massis and King Tough. Um, I'm not a big fan of Jay Massis is uh, Dinosaur Jr., nor do I like King Tough, but I do like them together. And Witch is an awesome band. Um, great fuzzy Seer is the an excellent example of Stoner Doom. Um, it's great. It's such an iconic riff. I would love to see them in a small place. Uh, they play sporadically. They've been recording now for a couple of years. They're supposed to have a new release. They did. Uh, they do a couple of shows in New England. Then they were in Europe playing a few festivals. So I got to see them. I have to. And my last band is uh, Quintron and Miss Pussycat. <laughs> Quintron is... Uh, I think I saw them in the Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> no but this guy quintron invents these instruments and he, his wife is miss pussycat so he has this hammond organ mixed with a fender Rhodes, and it looks like a, a car and he even has license plates louisiana license plates are from new orleans and it says quintron on it and she does percussion and a puppet show yeah. so wow can you uh can you invite me to go see that Yes, it sounds familiar. I want to see it. I, it is like my ex boyfriends used to see them all the time, and I they go. actually played Kingston. And it's like for all the videos I've seen, it's like a real dance party, and they do some really good covers. They do a few Rocky Erickson covers, and it just looks like a hell of a lot of fun. And you know, I want to do something different. I want to, I, like I said, I love her performance. So that is the band I would really love to see. And I struggled and struggled. I was like, should I even mention it? But yeah, yeah, they're a musical I go. And I I, why didn't I go? What? I'll go see anything. I don't give a fuck. Why? I know you would. You would have a good time, Ryan. I don't know. Hammond Organ and Fender Rhodes. I'm sold, man. Put yeah, I'd be in a puppet show. He's invented a couple sure of other. Can. He did a drum did a puppet show, yeah. Yeah, Final it's tap. crazy. Spinal Tap and Puppet Show. I'm, I'm not yeah. seeing yeah, a negative. Exactly. Here. I'm not it's seeing a downside. It's been a while for a puppet show for me. Yeah. Yeah, it was really it's cool. A, here you go. You know, that sounds like a blast. One door shut, <laughs> another door open. Especially if you have mushrooms. <laughs> there is that. Sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ralph, move over to you. All right. So, my number five is uh, Atheist Florida de Technical Death Metal, formed in 1987. They disbanded it in 1994 and reformed again in 2006. A few of my bands have that kind of a uh, story where, you know, they, they've been around for a long time, but then they really haven't because they took these big gaps where they disappear and then they come back. And uh, they, they just played recently at the Maryland Death Fest. And I, I don't drive that far for shows. And they, they, they come around once in a while. They're, I know they played like dingbats like a year or two ago, and I should have went then. Um, it, it seemed like something always comes up where I end up missing them, and they're a great band. I'd love to see them live. Number four, I got uh, Discharge wearing a shirt by them. Uh, English hardcore punk band formed in 1977. Uh, musical subgenre of D beat is named after Discharge because of the band's distinctive drum sound. Uh, multiple band members have come and gone, a uh, bunch of different singers. But uh, they're still going strong as far as putting out like good music. And they're another band that disappeared for a long time. And then they come back and different lineups and stuff like that. But from what I've seen, the last few albums I really liked. So I would definitely like to see even at least this version of them just because it's all I have a chance. And they are still active. 
Uh, number three is Candlemass, another band that's been coming around a lot lately. People have yeah. been catching them, but they they're not doing like like uh, good headlining tours that are you know coming around. It's like always on these festivals and stuff. But a uh, Swedish epic doom metal uh, formed in 1984, and uh, my number two is Asphyx, Dutch death metal formed in 1987. Martin Van Druen uh, left Pestilence in the early 90s, joined Asphyx. The band broke up multiple times, but have been going strong since 2008. Multiple band members again in and out of the band. The original drummer had recently left in uh, 2014, not that recent. But there's no original members in this band now. They're one of those bands that just kept going with with nobody original from the beginning. Wow. Uh, my number one is Autopsy, formed in 1987 uh, from California. Again, they disbanded in 1995, reunited in 2009. It's amazing how many albums they have, considering they took these long breaks. But uh, they're still they're still putting out albums like crazy. And now they've been seeming like they've been playing more shows and being more active lately. So I'm I'm hoping to catch them. I had a few times where I even had a ride to go, but I, I can't remember what it was. I could have seen them down in Brooklyn when Dan Lilker was playing bass for them. And that was like the last time where they played like New York, where I had a chance to go and I didn't go. And I've been kicking myself in the ass for, for years now because of that. So next time they come around, I'm not making no excuses. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there for it. I just say, I've, I've seen, Ralph, I've seen all five of those, but the only one I've seen in New York was Autopsy. And it was at that show at the Bell House in Brooklyn, probably like 10 years ago now, I want to say. I remember but Sam from... Uh, Morpheus and uh, Mortician. He offered me a ride and everything, and I, I forget what it came up, but I just couldn't do it. I don't know if it was money or whatever, but that was it. Like they never, uh, never came back to New York. And I know you guys traveled to all the festivals and stuff like that. I never go far. I won't even go to the Starland Ballroom no more. Like that's too far for me now. But uh, so it's got to come to like Brooklyn or you know somewhere in the city. And now that we don't have the chance that's even like less of a chance of catching a lot of these great bands. But uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, they I come back. Autopsy fucking yeah. rule. Yeah. I got to see them. I got a few honorable mentions if we, if we come back around. Okay. Yeah. You know, as far as like atheist goes, it's just a shame that Kelly's not playing guitar with them live anymore. What does he have? Like something wrong with his hand or something like that? I think so. I, they just played Maryland Death Fest, but they played Wednesday, and, and uh, Nick and myself went. We got there on Thursday, but I saw them at Maryland Death Fest like a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, so I, I saw them one time. Yeah, he's uh, just singing now, if I remember correctly. I, yes, I believe so. He was a good guitar player too. All right, Chris, over to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, my list. Uh, I pulled a, a Rich Catino on the bottom. <laughs> I uh, I did a three way tie because they're somewhat related. Uh, I, I do love uh, female fronted metal bands and uh, this is these are the only new bands uh, on my list and I just keep missing them. Uh, then they're all sort of related because they've swapped members a bunch of times uh, but the three-way tie is Nervosa, Crypta, and Burning Witches and I just keep missing them. Like uh, <laughs> Burning Witches was touring with Iron Maiden a year, uh, Iron Maidens, the male Maiden's band, Iron Maiden tribute band. When I went to the show, uh, they didn't have Burning Witches. Uh, then Nervosa toured, toured with Destruction. I went to that show, but then the show that I went to had Destruction, but not Nervosa. So I, I just keep missing them all. They keep coming over, and hopefully one of these days I will. You didn't uh, go with us to that KK down at KK's Priest show. Yeah, they, see, there's there you go. That, that's another one I missed. So listen, you know, the back of the, I don't have any, do I have any action figures with me? <laughs> yeah they always you know always with an arm's reach it oh. always it, it always says on the back collect them all does it even say <laughs> look, look see right there collect them all so you know I, that's so I, i've been li i've lived by it since i'm a little kid but uh you know I, i'm trying man i'm really trying so yeah hopefully i'll, I'll hit these at some point mm -hmm. uh the rest of my bands are all 80s bands uh number four probably the one i like the least but I love that one fucking song, man. And I know, I think Rich Catino went recently, speaking of the mighty Rich uh, Catino, and uh, it's Aldo Nova. Man, I love that fucking song, Fantasy. Oh, Fantasy is great. That's the only I, I, song I, I know from him. That is a good listen, song. Good I bought song. the tape in like 
I don't know, 85 or something. Mm-hmm. I think I just played fantasy like a hundred times. The I don't first know if album I was really good. Actually. I, I got to go back to I it. I had the album. Yeah. yeah. I still have the tape somewhere, but man, um, I would love to see him just to say, I saw him because you know he could just play fantasy like five times and I would be. <laughs> you might, you got your money's worth. <laughs> yeah, totally. He's another one though. He'd like after being away for like thirty-five years, he must be like a hundred and two. But he's he he's actually yeah, and, he looks he's not as old as you think, and he looks really good for his age. You know, maybe yeah. that's because he hasn't been on the road the last thirty-five years. Yeah. Yeah. I actually the I only saw him once. He opened up for Rainbow at the Mid Hudson Civic Center on the Bent Out of Shape. Ooh, that's a great wow. album. That was really good. That was the first out al- first Aldo Nova album. So wow, that's out, killer. Out at the time, yeah. There's for more. Sure that... How many does he have out? Oh, at bunch. least five. Yeah. Wow, is it that many? Yeah. I, I remember wow. he he like his big comeback was '89, and he played. Yeah. If I remember right, didn't he do a show with like at Giant Stadium or something with Bon Jovi? But I had no interest in that. So. Wow. I, I, think like bon jo- a... I think bon jovi produced that album that came out for him like in 89 right. him and richie sambora or wrote some songs for him he, he's kind of like a tommy lee jones or christopher lloyd where like they they've looked 100 for like the last 50 years you know <laughs> like even when they're in their 30s they look 100 and they still or, look 100. Or, or michael berryman from the hills have eyes oh he's he looked like he was, when he was a 30 he looked like he was 80 now he's 80 and he looks fine <laughs> he looks like he's 80. yeah he looks exactly like he's 80, so yeah, yeah that's true that's uh my, my next one uh similar uh along the same lines never saw him uh you know i have a bunch of albums played the hell out of the greatest hits record but he played with bon jovi in 1989 at giant stadium and i had zero interest uh billy squire uh, mm-hmm. apparently he's like huge, oh. um, like the mo- one of the most sampled musicians ever with like rappers, which is cool. But yeah. the story that I heard that he gets so much royalties from that, that he, that's why he hasn't toured in like 30 something years. <laughs> he did tour like a year ago. It was him and like the guy from, I don't even remember his name. It was the guitarist from the, the Hall and Oates band who then played guitar on um G. E. Smith. Yeah. The guy that played guitar on Saturday Night Live. Oh uh, yeah. But it was just the two of them and it was acoustic. And I'm like, I'm not fucking going to that. I'm like, I don't I don't want that. So well, you hear the stroke doing acoustic. That's it. What? That's it. And do the do the dance, man. Rub the towel between your legs. Let me see. <laughs> I feel like you ain't gonna get that. Probably not, but I, like, I would have actually seen wrong. him back in the day because I, I like Billy Squire actually. So. Oh, so you yeah. never saw him either. I never saw him either. That's okay, a, all right. Point. Well, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I'm trying to Listen, remember. They're tour- proclaiming on the internet that they like Billy Squire and they want to see them. That's Nothing wrong with Billy Squire. <laughs> it's a free yeah. country. I, I like Billy Squire, man. I played the that, shit that, out of that when I DJ back in the 80s. All, that greatest hits record, weekend. man? It's crazy. Yeah, we we a lot of good Bob, he yeah. opened up for Def Leppard on one of those tours. Uh, I'm trying, I, was just saying, I, I might have seen him, but I can't remember. I thought it was the opposite. I could be wrong, but I thought Def Leppard opened for him on that I tour. Early on, but then that's flipped, and then he opened for them. Ah. He, also, he also, I believe, oh, maybe not here, but I know he opened for Queen, I think, over in Europe. Oh wow! Wound up using Queen's producer on one of those albums. So uh, yeah, yeah, he produced Emotions in Motion. Yeah, because yeah. I remember I, I went to school with a kid, and you you guys remember they still do it sometimes. But with the bootleg shirts sold in the parking lot, you yeah. would get like one band on the front, and I remember he had Emotions in Motion. Billy Squire was on the front, and Pyromania was on the back. And this kid, I swear, he wore the same fucking shirt like once a week. This to, to <laughs> like school. That or they'd be like, dude, fucking change your shirt already. It's great. Go wash. Go, it. it. go wash. Go wash. in the wash. Go wash. Uh, but all right, my next band uh, is an 80s band that I got into really just one record. But um, they were lumped in with the hair bands. But they, to me, they were a total ACDC knockoff. They, they live, some of them live near Craig somewhere in fucking Pennsylvania. And they play like once a year in Pennsylvania. In like the last three years, I missed my chances, and it's uh, Dirty, Dirty Looks. looks. <laughs> they got Jason McMaster now from uh, Dangerous Toys, who was like the fill-in guy, right? He's filled in for Accept and uh, Armored, Armored Saint. Saint. Yeah. And did he do a fill-in spot for Metal Church? Like, I don't know. He's like, we'll sing for food, man. He'll fucking <laughs> sing for anybody. Give him a bowl so, of soup. He's, on, he's with you. You know, Dirty Looks, they do like two shows a year. 
So he's the fill-in guy, and I'm like, I don't care. I'll fucking see him with anybody. But yeah, I still, I still haven't seen him. So maybe yeah. I've, I've only been waiting since 1989. So I can wait <laughs> another couple of years, I guess. That's, that's where they, they, they. You, you told me about that. You said, "Oh, Dirty Looks is playing. Uh, is this place near you?" And it was, it was in Sealands Grove, and I, and I had to get out. I, I had to Google it, and I was like, "That's like." far away even from me it was in like the middle of the state and i was like that's yeah, the middle of it's like well we can try to do it but it's in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and it was like this huge like lodge it was like dirty looks yeah. headlined it and they played in front of like two thousand people yeah you know in their in their hometown in pennsylvania wherever that is yeah. so but yeah. yeah maybe one of these days and uh my my number one i'm actually gonna go in october uh, another 80s guy but i haven't seen him yet and uh that's vandenberg uh, I remember being a kid. I'm not a ballad guy at all. I hate ballads, but man, I like that. Really like that song, "Burning Heart," and I don't know why. Uh, it, it gave me the <laughs> it's a great song. Yeah, <laughs> like what you like. But then I, you know, I got the records, and I was like, "Wow, this is really good." And the the comeback records were excellent. Um, and yeah. yeah, so finally coming to America, and it's it's funny that I guess promoters were like, "Well." We'll do a tour for you, but you got to play Vandenberg and White Snake. Now that there's no more White Snake, so that's uh, that's the tour. But I'm like, yeah. well, as long as he does a couple of Vandenberg songs, I can. Yeah, you, you'll hear more uh, other stuff besides Vandenberg. Songs. Oh yeah, I forgot yeah. they even existed. I can't yeah. believe, like, oh, they're on my bucket list. I don't even remember them, but I remember the name. That's yeah. so funny to me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, like their peak was like what, like eighty three, eighty four, yeah. something like that. that? Chris, I saw him watch. twice in White Snake. MTV yeah. all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, videos all the time. Yeah. So yeah. Chris, you were a little too young, but they they played at the Civic Center on the first album tour. I'm trying to remember who they opened up for. It was either Maiden, Dio, or like Twisted Sister. I don't remember one. Wow. Yeah, they did some big tours. They were yeah. they were big. And, uh, they were great. Yeah. Um, and I saw him with White Snake a couple times. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him twice with White Snake <laughs> in I guess '87. Adrian Vandenberg. Yes. Yeah. That's what his it. name. Oh my God. I'm yeah. so impressed with myself. <laughs> How's that? Tony Dio just seen him a few months ago, met all the guys, got pictures with him. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, he did a run uh, with his new band opening yeah. for Jeff Tate. And I'm like, figures. Well, all the fucking times Jeff Tate plays New York, he used to play at the Chance so often. I'm sure he had, he had oh, a cot in the yeah. back. And this was the one time the Jeff Tate tour wasn't playing the New York area. And he came with a really good band, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm shocked that Vandenberg's doing a, a pickup, a, a smaller I don't know. I saw, this, I saw the set list for this tour. And oh, it's did like, you? It's like yes. 70% white, white snake. Wow. <laughs> of which most of them he had no part in whatsoever, other than the fact yeah. that he played them when he was in the band. Wow. And just like maybe four or five Vandenberg songs. So in sorry. other words, he's a cover band. If I want to go see Adrian Vandenberg, I want to hear him play his own damn songs. Sure. Yeah. I don't want to, I mean, I love White Snake, don't get me wrong, but it's just like I he he was in the band for such a short period of time and he only appeared on, you know, what but if if I had to bet anything, Pete, I would I I would bet that that would be promoters were like oh, listen 100 oh, yeah. you, you gotta do White Snake. Sorry, yeah. you you gotta do it. Well, like it or not, sure otherwise we're not booking you. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. Because like I said, there's enough Vandenberg albums to play. Oh yeah. I mean that last record was really good. Oh yeah. Even the one with Ronnie Romero on vocals. Yes. Was really good, you know? That was really good too. Yeah. So well that's that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Ryan, we're gonna move over to you. All right. So uh right when you first mentioned this, uh this was very difficult because uh I've seen, I don't know, pretty much everybody on the fucking planet that I've wanted to see. But then I had a couple conversations with friends and a couple names came up. So we're good. we got five bands. Uh, <laughs> none of these five bands are from the States, which I think factors in heavily uh, because if they're from the States, the odds are out of, I probably would have seen them. So uh, let's see, we'll go from the top. So this band, uh, this band is a band that I, I almost would have never had a chance to see, but they're technically active. They actually reunited and they, they've played a couple shows, but the odds of me seeing them in the near future are almost zero. And I'll tell you why. Because they're from Russia. So thanks to geopolitical fuckery, the odds are low. Uh, the band is Scald, uh, S-C-A-L-D. They put out a single album in 1997, and the album is called Will of Gods is Great Power. It's got a cool Viking funeral on the front, Russian band. So what does it sound like? Uh, this is like, it's like Candlemas. It's like that style of doom, like big epic doom, right. clean <laughs> vocals, 
uh, for me, and I don't say this lightly, this is probably the best album in that style without, aside from Candle Mass. It is amazing. Uh, they what's they the, only play the band Ryan. What's the name of the band again? Uh, so the logo is hard to read, but it's Scald C S C A L D. In the album, Will of the God. Yeah, it's on us. So this is a reissue because it, it came out in Russia. I forget the original label, but it's like you couldn't get it. You know, it was a Russian only label, but now it's on a High Roller Records. So, uh, whoop, whoop, there you go. So it's pretty easy to track down. But yeah, if you like like epic doom metal, uh, this album is perfect. It really is. It's perfect. The production's a little little flimsy because you know they didn't have a big budget. Uh, unfortunately, shortly after they recorded this, the vocalist died, and they disbanded for decades. Uh, but they did reunite fairly recently. They played a couple shows, I think a few shows in Germany before you know all the shit kicked off uh, in the world. And uh, they have a new album coming out, I think next month. Uh, I heard a new song; it sounds great. So they are still active, and maybe one day I'll get to see them. But yeah, if you like Candle Mass, like old like Nightfall, Epicus Dumicus Medical, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> this album is it's really fucking good. I just I cannot recommend this enough. Uh, but yeah, because they're a Russian band and they were defunct for like decades and they've only ever played a few shows in their career uh it's understandable how i would miss them second band i had a chance uh they played in new york not too long ago uh they are probably my favorite old they're actually they are they are my favorite old hardcore band huge influence on thrash metal and subsequently on death metal and black metal or elsewhere in the shirt it's discharge uh one of my favorite albums of all time they played in new york at a festival uh five six years ago and i I just didn't go because I'm I was fucked off. I don't know why. But yeah, uh, they do play. They play quite a bit. Like Ralph said, the newest album they did, which I think is from 2017, new vocalist, uh, is really good. It kind of sounds like old Discharge. I've seen recent live footage. They still sound good live. Uh, if they came around, I would definitely travel at least a little bit to see them. Like they play in England a lot where they're from. But, you know, I think they're actually touring South America or Brazil now or very soon. But yeah, I don't have a lot. They don't come to the States very often, so... I've they never just seen played the states though. Like two weeks ago, they played that uh, "Keep It True" or no, what is it? The that big punk fest. No va uh, values. No values. Where was that? No that values. was in California. Oh, yeah, so yeah, that was probably, headlined by the Misfits. Yeah, that's a little too yeah, far, yeah. you know. Just for money, you know. You 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 like you, like Chris said, you got to want to collect them all, but you know that costs money. So uh, I'll see them one day. They do still come around pretty often. So my number two is Discharge. Uh, let's see what do we got. What do we got? Number three. So this band is another another Chris Allo special here because they have played and they played tours and shows I went to, but the time I fucking went, they're like they're playing every show but this one because their flights were delayed and they didn't get into the country, so they'll be on the tour starting tomorrow. But fuck you, you don't get to see them. Uh, one of my favorite Swedish bands. Been a fan of them for a long time, actually, since this album came out. Still never seen them. That is The Crown. Uh, oh, yeah, never seen them. And they, and they haven't played times, the States yeah. now in pretty much since like 01 or 02. It's been literal Long decades. Time, yeah. They yeah. put out, they, they didn't really break up, but they took like, you know, lulls and activity. But they, they swapped singers too a couple times. Yeah, they still they still play Europe somewhat regularly. Not They're not like a heavy touring band, but, you know, they get around, but I, they don't think they've been to the States since like 02. And uh, yeah. On that tour, I mean, they played the Chance on that tour. Yeah, I'm, I've I'm, seen them at the Chance. Oh, I, I, was, I was not there. I don't remember why, but yeah, I just that tour. I didn't see it at the Chance, but I saw it um, at Obsessions in Randolph, New Jersey. It was Christian and the Crown, and I bought uh, a Christian shirt that Ralph did with the the oh, pentagram and and the girl on it. I always remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember. Us, I've heard the same thing from a couple of friends of mine that oh yeah, I saw them here and I saw them here uh, for a while. They toured and they had a. Uh, the singer from At the Gates. Yeah, uh, I've seen him a bunch of times at Thomas Lindbergh. Yeah, yeah, never. Uh, I don't know. Somehow, every fucking time they played, I just they played once with uh, or they toured with The Haunted and Witchery, yeah. and I went to two shows on that tour, and both of those two shows were the two shows they weren't on. Oh. and like they were on every other date except the two I went. Both one was in Jersey. I forget where the other one was, but uh, yeah, one day I'll see it. I still like the new stuff too. So, did the Crown do a tour with Dark Tranquility? Maybe like. 18, 20 years ago. Well, if they did, I wasn't fucking They, there. they might have. I mean, they, they I you know, there. they did quite a few tours in the States, but they have yeah. been 
It's like 20 years, Pete. It's yeah. been a long yeah, time. Because yeah. I, I could have sworn that I saw them with Keeler at like Toad's place like a long time ago. I don't know. Unless I'm thinking I mean, haunted. I don't, you, I don't. For a while, they were touring a lot, which kind of annoys me because yeah. I had, like you guys said, I had multiple opportunities, but I don't know. I was busy fucking off back then because I liked yeah. it. They I like when uh, I think they did their most touring with Thomas Lindbergh, but I think he was only he only did that one record, right? Crown yeah, and Terror, Crown and Terror, which is a good out. And then they really recorded record, yeah. with their regular vocalist. Yeah, it's not as good. It sounds better with uh, Thomas, but uh, yes. So, but here's a band that I think only played the states once. They're from Australia, so you know the the, the cost of airfare alone kind of knocks them out. But uh, I think they played one gig in Colorado. Uh, they're probably my favorite progressive death metal band ever. Uh, they don't really sound like any other progressive death metal. It's pretty unique. They have their own thing going. They have one of my favorite bass players in metal. I think I've mentioned him on the show a couple of times. The band is Stargazer. Uh, I'm not going to say it sounds like kind of like opeth stuff because it kind of doesn't. But I would say if you like like a band like Opeth, uh, you might like these guys. The, the bass player is just out of this fucking universe good. Uh, they have their own thing going on. They're just cool. They're a cool band. This is their second album from, I think, 2009 or 10. But uh, yeah. They've, uh, they were I, they were supposed to play a festival I went to in Texas in 2011. A lot it was a lot of fuckery involved called Rights of Darkness. Uh, still ended up being a great weekend. Uh, did a lot of partying. Don't remember much, but uh, <laughs> yeah, th- several bands dropped off due to the promoter being a flake, and uh, this was unfortunately one of them. But I yeah, like that. and I like that cover. That's cool. It's cool, right? Yeah. And these guys cool. are. Uh, I I I'm, I I don't know. I'm not big into like most progressive death metal. A lot of it just gets to for me, but these guys are phenomenal musicians and the songs are like you know three to four minutes they're very compact and just really good just good I'll, good I'll stuff check them out you I'm probably would like a uh, little like latter day death i think like sound of yeah it's like a little bit the production it's it's kind of warm and analog it doesn't sound very modern and clicky it sounds almost like an old rush album but like a little more lo-fi i guess it's cool i, I, I love them uh, one of my favorite bands i would love to see him uh hasn't happened yet I'm not writing it down because they sound cool, but I don't want to get into them if they never tour. So forget it. No, they don't. They don't tour. Uh, they still write and it. record pretty often, and I mean they don't tour even on Australia. Like they play like maybe two, three shows a year. Uh, they're just one of those bands, but I yeah, love them. It's like getting uh, into a toy line, but like, oh yeah, there's like five figues you can never get. Like, you'll never no, see forget it. it. I'm, not, I'm not doing it. Nope. If it happens, I mean, and it, you know what? There are a lot of bands that are in that boat, and I've seen ninety nine percent of them. So I'm very good at tracking these bands down. I try to fucking avoid me. I get you. One day I track you down. <laughs> but uh, so far, I haven't crossed paths with them yet. And the final band is from Denmark. Uh, I'm going to say Nick. I hate because Nick saw them twice. A festival he goes to in Finland. Uh, he actually caught them two years in a row, but they never tour here. Uh, the band is called Denial of God. This is their second album. These guys are like... It's like really good old black metal with like heavy metal and almost like a Merciful Fate way. It's black metal, but it has that classic Merciful Fate uh, Celtic Frost kind of feel to it. Very Mm -hmm. 80s in a way. It's just good. It's just good metal, uh, good leads, good vocals. In this case, it's a a concept album about someone dying and like the whole afterlife and uh, how they're being more. It's very Halloween-y kind of album, but they've never played the States. They don't tour. Sorry, Chris. Uh, they do play a couple shows here and there, but you know, I do find a lot of these underground bands, like they just, some of them just don't play a lot. Like they take select shows, they mm. won't do big tours and you know, that's what works for them. Uh, mm. it does make it challenging to track down, but like I said, I'm pretty fucking good at finding these bands <laughs> and crossing paths, but, uh, yeah, denial of God, I have not crossed paths with you. And I like them a lot because huge merciful fate fan. I just like that kind of black metal where it's not all just like fucking relentless blast beats, but it. It's almost like classic heavy metal. Kind of takes you on a journey. Uh, and these guys are really, really good at that. They've only got three albums out, even though they've been a band for like 35 years. So, Denial they, of God? Denial of God, yeah. Cool. Vocalist is really, really cool. Uh, does they have cool... You know, sometimes they have these gatefolds and somebody... Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at this band photo. That's oh, a great band photo for you. Look at those guys. Look at those cheery Danish gentlemen right there. Nice. Oh, right in a row. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't crossed paths with them yet, but one day I will. One day I will see them. So those are my five. And by the way, your your band Scald, uh, yeah. they do have a Bandcamp page, and it looks like they released two new tracks in twenty twenty one. So yeah, it was a single. To see what they sound uh, like now. Yeah, new vocalist uh, guy Felipe Plaza plays in a couple other good doom bands. Originally from Chile, I think he lives in Sweden now. But phenomenal vocalist, and the songs from the new album coming out 
next month sound really good. So, but the rest of the band is stuck in Russia. So <laughs> we will see. Maybe one day. Yeah. Greg, over to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm fortunate to have gotten to see uh, lots, lots and lots of good, sh uh, good bands that I've uh, always wanted to see some, some multiple times uh, on occasion. But there's always a few that have eluded me over the years. And uh, uh, my first, my first one, just, just as uh, uh, Ryan is famous for always mentioning uh, Voivod, I am uh, perhaps famous for always mentioning. Rose tattoo that I've uh, oh, from Australia I, oh. that I would uh, uh, someday love love to see. Chris uh, Chris told me he's he has seen them at I one of the Euro in Belgium. That he went to. Uh, I don't know if Ryan or Nick if you saw them at any of the Euro fests that you've been to. No, but, I fucking love to, but I never did. But uh, they had a tour lined up in 2020. Uh, they they don't tour America much at all. They actually had a really small tour set up in America in 2020, uh, right when the pandemic hit and mm -hmm. everything got shut down, and they never rescheduled it. They currently are. Uh, they had. An, I just read that they had announced that they're doing their final farewell tour, and that uh, Angry Anderson, the the singer, is kind of bringing back some prior members of, of the band who were still still surviving uh, quite a few of them have passed away uh, over the years and that they're going to be guesting on some songs but they're probably not going to be coming to america uh I mean, not, it'd be nice but i i have my doubts that they would uh, make their way over here but if they do i will uh, definitely be first in line to catch them as i've uh, enjoyed their music for many years and just never got a chance to see them my uh, second choice uh, is a band. I'm, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure Pete's probably seen them before back at back uh, back in the day, and Rob probably too. And uh, it's the the best thing to come out of Switzerland since uh, co cocoa with the little marshmallows in it, and that is Crocus. Uh, I, I they again also had a tour lined up in 2020 i believe that at the time was supposed to be their farewell tour and uh they they had a philadelphia date i believe they were playing at the the, the truck or the tla and the everything was shut down they canceled it and they never bothered to uh, reschedule it I'm pretty sure that they've pulled a Scorpions and have uh, and are not maybe announced a farewell tour, but now they're just keeping keeping playing anyway. Lead lead sing uh, they they have uh, I believe four print four of their principal members still in in the band uh, to this day. Vocalist Mark Storacci still sounds great live. Uh, I have a, a a recent live album from them, and they do lots of their old uh, old songs that are sort of ACDC ish. And oh, yeah. uh, they still they still sound uh, great uh, to this day, and uh, odd, oddly enough, both Rose Tattoo and uh, and Crocus are on the Monsters of Rock cruise, uh, uh, which is coming up in uh, February. So I don't know if anybody out there wants to start a GoFundMe page, and Aldenova is on that too. Oh, oh, a lot of birds with one course, stone. You here. guys are taking so, a trip. You have go. go fund me page to put Chris and I on the boat. That bike gets I mean, out a little bit on that. So that we can lay waste to the buffet and the drinks <laughs> and, and see uh, and see some of these bands that we have not gotten a chance to see. Get a cabin with a balcony. You have a nice view. Nice. I I think Burning Witches was uh, one of the bands. I, I think you're right. Oh, you guys you <laughs> check <laughs> off every box right there. I know you guys should do it. Do it. You get any of my fucking bands will be playing. I'll go with you. I've done three of those rock cruises in the past. They are a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, there's yeah, Aldo one, Nova. Do it, Chris. This one there's a there's uh, there's quite a few and they, and they had a pretty good lineup. I sent the picture to, yeah, to Michael uh, Shanker to Chris the other day. Yeah, there was a really good good setup of bands that they had uh, over a few days. Uh, I believe it's in February. Yeah, of, uh, I think you're right. I was in the audience at the Mid Hudson Civic Center in 1985 when they were shooting the concert portion of the video for screaming in the night oh yeah nice. it's, it's, wow it's just really it was we a really weird night it's like they played for like maybe an hour and then they left the stage and the manager comes out and he's like yeah well that's that's the end of the show but if you want to hang around a little bit we're going to record them singing screaming in the night for the upcoming video so you can hang out and like an hour later 
Like there were like maybe 50 of us <laughs> left. We were all there in the front and they shot, they, the camera crews came out and they shot uh -huh. them up there kind of, you know, miming to uh, Screaming in the Night. And there's a there's, there's two videos available for that song. If one of them's got, at the end of it, it shows like them on stage and you can see us in the front row. And Yeah, I'm watching nice. that. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs. I, <laughs> I went to see them at the Civic Center and it, I think it was 1983. It was the Blitz tour. And that whole show got aired on MTV like the following week and uh white lion opened up and they didn't even have an album out at the time i thought they were oh, like really? a, a van helen tribute band the way they looked they looked just like van yeah. helen at the time but they didn't even have I an album out but that whole show was the whole show was aired like a week later on on mtv yeah i, th I think i have that on vhs i think and yeah i saw crocus craig they came over in like 2002 or 2003. oh okay okay and I, that was the one time i saw them and i was going to that farewell tour at the gramercy in new york city and yeah it got canceled because of COVID. And, and they they play at those uh like m3 fests uh, yes. in, in maryland sometimes or some of those uh big festivals like like tony dio uh goes to that are uh down by him and well, in the i think they're the biggest rock band to ever come out of switzerland I think so. yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, as much as i like celtic frost they didn't sell as many records yeah yeah, yeah. well my my third my third choice is uh is uh one I, I could have gone to see a few months ago but i guess i was too freaking lazy and because they, it was like in in feb it was in february i think or in the middle of the week and it was cold or it was rainy or something that's the obsessed uh you know i oh. I, I, love, I love i love wino and i uh most of the project uh projects that he's associated with and they they did tour uh for this new album uh gilded sorrow and they they actually they played at a at a place in philadelphia called milk boy uh, that um, I think is in Center City, or it's not too not too bad. But it, again, it was in like the middle of the week, and and it was cold and blustery out, and it was like, nah, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> so I I I could have went, but some someday I'd like if they come to something that's uh, maybe maybe a little in maybe a little bit in a better area, I will certainly go. My last two choices, these are uh, bands that I, I firmly believe that. If you that if when you if you go with it with a group of people like like you guys, you know, that I would that even if you don't know all the songs or anything, you would have a whole lot of fun uh, and, and just be singing along or or you know trying to sing along or throwing beer back and just you know having <laughs> having a great time. So one of those bands for for me, I think that in a group would be Halloween. And uh, oh, the, yeah. the, um, <laughs> the uh, caveat, it would have to be the Pumpkins United where there's like nine or <laughs> nine or 17 guys on stage or whatever. And, you know, so it would have to be, you know, all of them. And I, you know, with, like I said, you you guys, uh, uh, again, a shout out to the mighty Rich Catino, uh, <laughs> Nick, and, you know, and, and you know, who, whomever else, you know, to, you know, singing, singing these, these, uh, you know, Iron Maiden on speed, uh, you know, type songs with, uh, you know, th throwing throwing back lots of beer, you know, maybe. Actually, you need to experience going to see Halloween Live with Steve Keeler because yes. he, he sits up and sings every line to every song. So and him, and him as him as well. And I borrow one of the capes from uh, you know from uh, Ryan or Nick, you know, to wear for you know for Halloween. So I think that would be a really a really fun fun show with with a group of people uh, to go see. The same holds true uh, for its last band. I don't I know some songs by them, but again, seeing them with like all you guys in a group setting, I think would be really cool. And that is Hawkwind. Uh, I just oh, think that yeah. would be it would be a <laughs> lot of fun to uh you know uh space out you know and such to to the to the cool songs and and everything that they have and uh i don't i don't know how much they tour really around i've never taken notice of a whole lot of uh american tour dates i mean maybe you guys would know but i think it would be a, a, a fun band to see with a group of people and even if you don't know the words to every single song i think the musicianship and the show that you see on stage, I think, would be uh, conducive to a to a fun time with the right people uh, mm -hmm. that you'd be with. So yeah, uh, they haven't. I mean, Dave Brock is in his early eighties now, so I don't know how into like traveling far he is. But they were they were playing here in the states up until like I don't know, geez, 
early 2010s or thereabouts. They were still coming over every couple wow. of years, but they haven't been here. I think they still play live shows in, in uh, the UK and Europe occasionally. But I know like Nick Turner, their original, one of their original members who plays saxophone and vocals. I mean, they, they split up years ago, but he was coming over here as Nick Turner's Hawkwind. And I got to see, Hawkwind was one of my picks too, by the way. That's a very good choice. Uh, I got to see Nick Turner's Hawkwind, but it's not quite the same thing. And that was a lot of fun because all he basically did was play all classic Hawkwind stuff. And I saw that in like a little club in New York City. And that was loads of fun. So yeah, I think seeing Hawkwind in a kind of, with the people who you know are yeah. into their music in a kind of a cool place would be, would be a blast. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Great band. All right, Rob. All right. Well, actually, uh, on that note that Craig was talking about Halloween, uh, it's funny because that last show that they did, I missed that show too. And I'm so pissed off that I missed it. I saw them back in the 80s, but I haven't seen them since then. <laughs> Rob, so, the Irving Plaza uh, show was epic. Yeah, I, I know. Like I, three I, hours. I quite a few people everything. that went to the show. And uh, again, a lot of the reasons that the bands that are going to be on my list tonight is because of scheduling usually for, for me. You know, sometimes you just can't get to all these shows. And this band here, Except is one of the bands I've never seen. And I love Except from the days of Udo to now, you know, and uh, I've never got to see them live. Not, not that I remember. I don't think so. Not even Udo on its own. So I would like to see either one of the bands, you know. Uh, I know they're playing uh, September with KK. I'm thinking about it, but, you know. No. Uh, U, uh, UDO or Udo is playing a solo yes. show by, by me in Reading uh, in they're, they're, September, I believe. They're both and touring at almost the same yeah. time. Oh. Yeah. And Udo has Peter Baltus I mean. now on the base. Thing is, yeah, there's more, there's more, more, there's more accept people in Udo's band than in accept. Yeah. 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 I don't know. So we had a great time when we saw accept at the chance. It was oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I, know, I love them. I, I didn't go to that show either. I couldn't get there that night. And then, uh, wait a minute, wait, hold it. And they play right down the block. Yes, that's right. Lady Pink 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 Pink. Pink. Oh, you're like, we're pretty much in your backyard. That's yeah. right. I forgot that. Why that's why, did I, you that's do that? why I was not missing the Saxon show. I was, and, and you're right. I just I can't miss another good show. So, and then King Diamond, oh. Merciful Fate, never saw them live. I got it. And I, I to be honest with you, I hate going to Brooklyn. I didn't, and after the, hearing the horror story that you guys told me, I was like, I'm never going down there. <laughs> Fuck that. Mm. So, but I, I hope that, you know, he comes yeah. back again towards five hour day. trip to Brooklyn. You know what? Oh. I'm only I, I'd rather go to Pennsylvania. Yes. Craig, you know what's funny? Brooklyn. I go to Brooklyn all, I've been to Brooklyn like three times in the last two weeks. I've never in my life had a problem except for that show. Me too. I've literally been there like a thousand times. <laughs> to me, it's a million times easier than Manhattan. Never any issues except that fucking merciful fate show. It took a day and a half to get there. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> and I'm like jammed into this like I don't, I don't get sports it. car. Like and everybody's like, fuck Brooklyn. I'm like, usually like me and Nick go down there all the time. Like, dude, I get to Brooklyn in like 70 minutes. It's I never know. an issue. Like same fight to the clubs. That show took me a month to get there. It was horrible. Yeah. My and stepdaughter is a big what neighborhood. Judge. Was that in? It was in Brooklyn all the time. With the that was the King's oh, Theater. King's Theater. Yeah. 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 How far yeah. was it? I mean, it's different well, in Greenpoint or you're in Queens. No, you're, but me and Nick went down not that long again to see the band Emperor at that same venue. We had zero problems getting there. We were there in like a little over an hour. Yeah, as soon as I heard day, where it was, was, I'm like, nope, I'm not going. It was that one. That's the only time I've had a problem going to Brooklyn. You know, it was a Friday night. I think we all left later than we wanted to, right? I think. Well, I actually, Pete, we, we we left, left my house at like. 2 30 yeah, yeah it was, me too it took it us like five and a half hours it wow. took a year to get there it was crap still driving there the, the hilarious life. thing was when we all like finally met up there usually you'd be all happy to see everybody everybody was complaining about how long yeah. oh i was a dude i was exhausted i was like forget i'm ready to go home forget it yeah. like i was literally there two days ago it took me about an hour to get there it was like that crazy I, that was a cursed night but they were great that was a good show yeah it was worth it <laughs> So my next one is uh, Catatonia. I know Kilo likes them a lot too. And I, I missed the last tour that they, they played. I really want to see them. I've been into them for the last 15, 20 years. Um, and they tour a lot. So I think I'll get a chance to see them again. Same thing with this band, Enslaved, uh -huh. who I got into later in the, in the game. So, But I really like their music and I... And I just haven't had a chance to see them yet. So that's going to be what somebody I want to see. Now, this next band... I know Pete loves 
We're going into progressive metal, and it's a band that I've never seen, and it's very hard to see them because they don't ever come to the States. I mean, not in a while, and that's Threshold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this band. One of my favorite bands. I have every single album. Uh, they, you know, even with the new singer, uh, what's his name? Glenn? Glenn, right? Yes. Um... Yeah. I mean, he's terrific. I, I really love this band, but they don't tour the States. You basically well, got to go down the prog power in Atlanta to see them. Well, if that's it. And everybody's always busting my chops. Why don't, how come I don't do prog power? I, I just don't have the time to do, you know, to go down there. I mean, I, I got to hop on a plane. You got to get a weekend's worth of uh hotel and well, it's hotels, hotel, food. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to make sure that everybody else is wearing deodorant. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's asking a lot. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do it now just to get it out of the way. I know count, has uh, some honorable mentions. This is my honorable mention. Another uh, lo- prog metal band that I love, Pagan's Mind. I got to see them. I have the, the Blu-ray, but you know it's not the same thing seeing a band live. So mm-hmm. I got to see these guys before I die. Yeah. That's an iconic like power band. band right there. They, they'll come I here know. once every four years, play prog power, be like, thanks, America. We'll see you next time. <laughs> That's good choices. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's see. So mine. So my my first choice is a guitar player who I've been into forever, and he's been around forever because he's I think he's like eighty years old now. Um, and I've had opportunities to go see him, either solo or in other things that he's done. But that's John McLaughlin, of course, from the Mahavishnu Orchestra and Miles Davis and all sorts of other things. I I was hoping to see him in like the late eighties because he was doing the guitar. He was doing that guitar trio thing for a while, but then they announced the tour, and instead of him, it, was, it wasn't him, Aldemiola, and Paco de Lucia. It was um, Morelli Legren, Aldemiola, and Larry Coriel. So I didn't get to see John. He's played lots of solo stuff over the years. Um, I just never. He still tours, but not as regularly. So I got to see him before he passes and, away. Because and Larry's gone now, right? Pete? What's that? Larry's gone, right? Yeah, Larry's gone. Yeah, yeah Larry's, Larry's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So uh and Paco's gone too. So yeah, I, I gotta see John before he before he retires or you know, the other option, right? So gotta do that. Uh another band I've never seen. It, it actually didn't really dawn on me till Ralph and I did a rank in the albums episode a couple months ago. I've never seen destruction. What really? I've never seen destruction. Wow. I know, strange because I've seen basically every other great thrash band. That's never walked really the earth, but for whatever reason, uh, the stars have never aligned to go see Destruction. I've seen wow. Creator a million times. I've seen Sodom. I've seen all the American bands. Never Destruction. So, wow, they're so good. They're, oh. They are still good live. Yeah, yeah. Love, would love to. So one of these days. Uh, all right, so I had Hawkwind. I'll take them off. I'll substitute something else in. Um, I would love to see, and I've seen all the individual members themselves in other projects, but never together. I would love to see Black Country Communion. And they got a brand new album that oh. just, just came out, which is really yeah, cool. That's, that's not happening. Yeah, you know, because they they do like a, a show or two and that's it, right? Yeah. And it's, I, 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 you know, I did a review of this and I'll, I'll bring it up here. So the, in the new CD the in the middle, they show them on a stage. I guess it's supposed to be them in front of like hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm thinking how ironic that they do that when this band never plays live, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, I mean, I, I'm not a, a fan of his solo stuff. He's a talented guy, but I think it's Joe Bonamassa, right? Because he does yeah. unbelievable business on his own. By himself, oh, yeah. 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 And I've seen Joe solo a couple times. He's great, great live show. I've seen Glenn. I've seen uh, Jason Bonham in a couple things, and I've seen Derek Cherini and all sorts of things, but I've never seen them together. And I really love the band. So I, hopefully they'll play some a couple shows or do a little tour or something so I can catch them. I, I had a chance a number of years ago, probably like a decade ago, they played like one date at Starland Ballroom. I remember that show. Yeah, I, 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 just, I didn't go. I was like, oh, okay, they'll be back. Oh, yeah, and, and it never exactly. came back, right? Nope. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, I've never seen Diamond Head. I would love Ooh. to see Diamond Head. Wow. Oh, I saw them. Mm. They played the chance yeah. last in a fucking was, ice yeah. storm. That, they were go. awesome. Yeah. Well, that was a treacherous drive home, and the pucker factor was significant. So staying yeah. home might have been the way to go. Yeah. I saw them on that metal uh, meltdown. And I was uh, at that uh, show, too, yep, in Asbury yeah. Park. Yeah, with the Tat- Tatler. That was and like Sean Tatler singing. We're in yep. the band, yeah. yeah. So we'd love to see them one day. And one from 
back when I was a kid, I was a huge fan. I still really like the band. It's definitely not hard rock or metal, but more of kind of like pop, art rock sort of thing. I've always loved Electric Light Orchestra, ELO. Yeah. I never saw them. They keep coming around. Jeff Lynn keeps putting them, you know, his version of ELO back together and doing these big tours once every like five years. And I always want to go. And then I look at those ticket prices and they always play the guard. And I'm like, yeah, I really want to go, but I don't know if I'm into spending 200 and something dollars to go get a nosebleed seat for ELO as much as I would love to go because they've been a bucket list for a bucket list forever. Um, yeah. But uh, I thought about it because they're playing, I think in September, but as ultimately I just was like, eh, I'll, I'll wait. I, I looked at those tickets too, Pete, because I thought about it for a minute and same thing. It was like, you know, in the hundreds that we're looking at like 600 bucks. I'm like, I don't like them that much. Yeah, exactly. I, I do like them a lot, but I'm just not spending that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. not going to happen. I'll have one off my bucket list, finally. Creator, this coming this fall. Nice. There you go. Yep. Yeah, you'll enjoy the good You life. guys will be there, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Rob is sitting in front of us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that'll be good. It's Testament Creator and Possessed, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never seen Possessed, so this will be pretty cool. Wow. That makes two of us. That's another yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any honorables? I know Ralph does. Uh, Karen, you got any? Uh, yeah. Um, sleep. They're oh. always up in the air. Yeah. I never know. Uh, I read an interview with Matt Pike not too long ago, and he said that they're working on something. He's very vague about it. So I actually was at uh, All Tomorrow's parties, and they played, but it was the day before. I didn't have a weekend pass, so... That was it in the Catskills. That's it, yo. Uh, and that was a great show, but I missed that. And actually, Keith Morris from the Circle Jerks has a band called Off that I really like, and they keep coming around, and I just never can get it together. And I want to do that before he just stops because he's getting older and crankier. So <laughs> I just want to see Off and final sleep. Shows. They do their final shows right now, and they're, they got their two dates for – I think two dates for New York, and it's it. Their final tour. They're 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 breaking up after this tour. Yeah, I just heard about that too. Yep. Son of a bitch. All right, <laughs> I gotta get on that. Damn. Yep. Gotta go. All right, Ralph. I, yeah, so off is one of mine too, and uh, uh, got a lax to that, like an old band, but I I love that porno gore grind shit. You know, I you played. You guys watched the video and stuff, and uh. They had the portable porta potty flying around and throwing <laughs> toilet paper around. So I think it just be a fun band. I really like their CD. Uh, Onslaught from England. They're they're doing like some kind of final shows where they're playing the whole uh, first album in its entirety. Uh, Rolling Stones, like you were saying, uh, five years ago I looked into those tickets and they were like so ridiculous back then. Mm. Yeah. I didn't even look this time. I figured five years later it's going to be an extra hundred, two hundred more, and like you're saying, to get like seats so far away, it's just too much for a band, you know. Um, I think Ralph. I think I paid for that show at the in Jersey. I think I paid one hundred fifty dollars for a ticket way up top, and just it, the the whole show to me wasn't fun. They were great, but I it just everything else about it was just not a good experience. Yeah, even one hundred and fifty dollars yeah. with the twenty dollars beers, and then the fifty fifty dollars to park, and yes, yeah, yeah, poles on the way down. It just becomes yeah. too, too expensive. Um, yeah, really uh, Sacrifice from Canada is another band, one of those bands that they were kicking ass. I almost seen them back at Lemoore's back in the day, and then they broke up for many many years. Now they're back playing shows again, so I'm hoping that I catch them eventually. They're one of the big thrash bands that I never got to see. That's it. Cool. Oh wait! Oh wait! More. Uh, the Triumph of Death. But uh, I want to see them do the Hellhammer set where they do just do all the Hellhammer stuff. Mm -hmm. I know that you guys got to see them recently with the uh, yeah. doing the Celtic Frost set, and that'd be great to see too. But oh yeah, I I really, well they did. I, I never seen any uh, version I was gonna say yeah, they did both. He did uh yeah. the first night he did the Triumph of Death stuff, and then the yeah. last night he did all the Celtic Frost stuff. Mm. Yeah, if I could catch one, I would love to catch the Hellhammer stuff. Yeah, for sure. Chris, you got any left? Uh, when I was 11, I wanted to see Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, <laughs> I, I never did. I haven't bought any of his records since I was 11. But um, hey, never say never. So 
supposed to be like he puts on a great show, show that he, that's he what changes, i've always heard he changes costumes like for almost every song yeah. and i already and, changed his yeah. costumes more than rob halford so yeah. <laughs> i'd probably be into that <laughs> uh, yeah. ryan you got any left uh so it's actually kind of funny and i remember talking to karen about this a couple of months ago it was a band that i've never seen that i like and i actually had tickets and I was debating going, and I saw I sold the tickets and went to another show that night. Uh, and that band is Black Flag because is it really Black Flag now? It was like Greg Jinn and you know some some homebodies. Uh, yeah. They played that in Brooklyn, and I had tickets. The tickets were like sixty bucks, and then like two weeks before, I'm like, fuck it, and I sold them. But uh, I love. I mean, I love old Black Flag, but the last album they did like ten years ago, I thought was, you know, it made Blink One Eighty Two sound like fucking Slayer. I didn't like it at all, and I just didn't go. I went to another show that night, and I, I honestly don't regret it, but I never saw them. And there's you a cool... You should have caught them when that album came out. They played Brooklyn with that singer. He was one of the original singers. He was the second singer that they had, and uh, he only lasted like six sh shows. Yeah, on I remember. Yes. Was it I didn't, Des? Yeah, I, didn't yeah. go to, I didn't go to that for some reason. The guy that who played uh, this year, or most recently, he wasn't a uh, any original member. I think the only guy in the band was Greg, but uh, still would have been cool to see Greg. Mike, but... when Mike, Mike Valley uh, replaced him on the tour. He was in the opening band with Greg Ginnett, was playing with two bands that night. But uh, that guy is actually now the longest singer ever in Black Flag. He like none of the singers from Black Flag lasted more than a couple of years. So now he's been <laughs> in the band now. I mean, like that, that that show was like like you were saying like ten years ago or whatever. Yeah, at least and, this uh, this one was. This was like back in it was this year it was February the one I was talking about and I did I, I had tickets to go and uh, it was at St. Titus. They played the chance a couple of years ago. I bring all my albums. Greg Ginn signed them all for me. But the real show that the catch would be the the band Flag because they had like everybody was an original or, or was in Black Flag at one point except for mm -hmm. our player. Like everybody right, else, right. Dez, you had Des Keith Morris. Yeah. There's two students in the band right there. They and they were touring that. at the same time. I remember that. Black Flag, yeah. They're wow. Black Black Flags playing in playing in Reading uh, near me on Friday, August the sixteenth. Wow. Twenty eight dollars. But it's, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was only Greg left, and I, I, I really was like, nah, fuck it. I just think I, I forget which show I went to, but uh, whatever I went to was good. So and the other one was uh, it's a band that Pete actually reviewed recently. It's an Australian. Uh, they, they sound like Rainbow, like Rainbow, Old, Dry Heap. The band's called Taro. Uh, they're a new oh, band from yeah. Australia. They're really fucking good. They're so good. Uh, but they've never played the States. They're totally an obscure underground band. There's their new album right there. Really good shit. This is a compilation of uh, EPs and demos from a couple of years ago. But uh, yeah, they're like of all the new bands around today, they kind of have that Rainbow, Uriah Heap, Wishbone Ash kind of thing. Nice. Uh, these guys are hands down my favorite. Really good. So they didn't do much for a while. Now they're playing some shows in Europe again. So, like I said, I'm going to get you. I'll track you down. I'll get you one day. So, just not you make it. You make it happen, Brian. Make it happen. Way or another. Yeah. That's, right uh, that's all I got. Just those two. <laughs> Craig, you got any left? Uh, just uh, the helicopters. I'd love to see them from uh, from Sweden. They just released a new single actually uh, within the last few weeks, which is uh, which is pretty good and. Uh, so if they tour again, that would be awesome. Uh, Whoa, fat! I've never gotten a chance to see. I think that that would be a, a fun a fun show since they have quite a few albums now. Um, I'm sure they they sound great live. And uh, I'd like to see Duran Duran live, but they would have to play all '80s songs. Not I, I don't want to hear anything new. And it's just, just heard Duran Duran today. I, too. I just, so just, just want to hear. I just want to hear the hits. You know, and the, like world. That. I I'm love sure Duran. they would play most of them. I would <laughs> Rio. Like. Yeah, just wants an ordinary world. That's it. That's it. That's it's hungry it. like the wolf. <laughs> Rob, you got any left? No, that's no. it. Well, I mean, I have a lot, but I'm not going to get to them now. It's too long. I hear it. I, 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 I'll, I'll give it to you this way. Our last show was I only got 31 points, so you know I missed a lot of bands. You know, I, I if Slayer does it, you know, a, a real tour, I would love to see Slayer. Definitely, I have to see Slayer if they do if they do a tour again. I know there was all that rumbling a couple like a month or so ago. Is that all bullshit? Or uh, Kerry King says no. He, I mean, I, ju I just watched like three interviews with him. He claims that they're never going to tour again. But then again, you know, the 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 two year farewell tour was supposed to be the last shows ever. Right. So no, isn't it? It's, it's no, isn't it's not happening or no, isn't it's bullshit. Like, 
I mean, Kerry King recently said, he's like, well, we'll do shows here and there, but we're not, we're never going to tour again. Uh, yeah, so, that's a solid, that's a solid infusion of cash to one festival. You get like, yeah, you know, yeah. big payday out of it. Yeah. Well, I know D Snyder said recently, you know, they did their big farewell tour and he said, that's it. We're I do not want to be one of those bands to, you know, to, to do a comeback. But he recently said, and maybe he was being honest, he's like, you know, the offers keep piling up. And he's like, they're getting so large that, you know, it's, he goes, no. I feel it's irresponsible for me to say no, because it's so much money for all the guys that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We, is, that's the legit. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, these guys got are, that Christmas song money and they don't. Right. He's still got stuff going mm -hmm. on and they, they, yeah. they don't. And when you're getting yeah. older, you need the money. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. You know, that's legit. You'd be taking money out of other people's pockets if you're like, yeah. fuck off, you right. know, so that's right, fair right. enough. All right, for me, uh, I got a couple, um, and I, I didn't go when they came around recently, Lucifer. Oh, really Craig nice. and I went, that was amazing. Yeah, so that, Lucifer yeah. and Coven, that was killer. I'm hoping they come back around, because I really <laughs> wanted to see that. Yeah, yeah. Really wanted to see that. Uh, I've never seen Alice in Chains, huh. believe it or not. No, I haven't either. No, Even I haven't either. Lane, Sorry. I still, because I still think their recent albums are really good. I would yeah. like to check, but I mean, did they tour all that much? Even like they toured they a couple before? years ago. Yeah, yeah. they did tour. A couple I, th years I thought ago. you'd have seen them when they opened for Van Halen, you know, way back in the. No, yeah. didn't see that. Yeah, I, see I saw them a bunch, bunch, bunch way back, back when. Day, but they played right in Middletown with Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. Yeah, and I was, I was like, Alice in Chains. What the fuck kind of name is that? And <laughs> they they did the intro at Rock Fantasy and stuff. But I didn't even know who they were. I don't remember the video. Or nothing. There were nobody's we, at the time. Yeah, we hung out and drank beer up until. Uh, the first band came on, I think, was uh, Anthrax or Megadeth. Yeah, I'd like to see him one day. Uh, believe it or not, I've never and and they're they're ready to call it quits for touring. I've never seen Sirithungle. Oh, mm. yeah, I and I know so. they're coming around soon, right? I they're playing two over? last shows in Brooklyn. I got tickets to both. They're both sold out. Yeah, it's, I didn't get any time. Oh. I mean, I could probably I could probably reach out to Rich and say, "Hey, dude, you know, you could get." They tickets. are. They're really. I just saw them this year in Texas. They were still really good. Yeah, really and their last their last album, I love that album, man. <laughs> Phenomenal, oh, yeah. great. And last but not least, I've always wanted to see her. I would love to see Debbie Harry doing a whole Blondie set. Oh yeah, so mm -hmm. I know she plays some shows here and there and does some things, so I don't know, but I think that would be loads of fun. So I get to the best part was I got to see her at CBGB's once, but then I got she came into my storage facility. I I told you that is that story. I made out with her. You remember yeah. that? Well, she gave me a kiss and a hug, and she signed uh, an autograph. The whole band was there. Chris Stein, the whole nine yards, cool. was working out in Queens. And they walked in. I was like, my eyes just got big. I'm like, what the? That That's was awesome. 88. Yeah. That's awesome. Crazy. Nice. That cool. Yeah, she, yeah. And I always had to think for her anyway. So, As did, did most of us young men back then or young boys, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked my father. They're all over my wall back in those yeah. days. There you go. So there you have it, everybody. Our uh, bucket list bands and artists down in the comments below list any ex still existing, still active bands who you've just never had an opportunity to see that you still really would love to. Put them down below in the comments section, and we'll see you next time here on the Hudson Valley Squares. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. That's right, Chris. All, all, the, all the damn time. time. Yeah. Have a good rest of the week, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday. <laughs> New album reviews, Monsters Den Thursday, Friday morning at the Fun House with Martin Popoff on Friday, of course. Fester's Picks on Friday. Got all sorts of stuff happening over the weekend. Oh, and don't forget Sunday, ranking the albums of Sodom along with Mr. Scow and Mr. Ralphus over there. So, two yes. months of that. It's going to be an epic one. All 16 albums, we're doing all of them. Till then, for Karen La Preziosa. Ralph Tambora, Chris Allo, Ryan Scow, Mr. Kaminsky, the Craigster, and Rob Lasante. I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon here on the Hudson Valley Squares. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night.